Well, the last two videos that I've uploaded have been live match videos, one from Holcroft and one from Boston. Those videos are live now, so if you haven't seen those, go and check them out. The one common theme through both those videos was the fact that I was fishing with the method feeder. And the last few days I've had so many questions about, you know, why it can be such a great method on its day. I've brought you along here to a fishery that's not far from where I live and it's an ideal situation, it's an ideal venue where I can go through the different types of method feeders that I use and why I pick each one for each scenario. And hopefully we're going to catch a few fish for you as well. One of the reasons why the method feeder can be such an exciting method is because it's a self-hooking method basically the fish hook themselves so when you see an indication on your tip that means that the fish is already on and it's hooked so as you can imagine when you're fishing for carp and bigger fish especially if you're fishing up to features or at really close range the bites of just basically hooked fish that's what they are and they can be quite violent quite exciting and very very fast that is why um, I love fishing this method wherever I possibly can. One thing I've got to say is that the method isn't allowed on every single fishery that you go to so please always check the rules alright. I don't want you getting into trouble for fishing and breaking fishery rules. I carry a selection of feeders for a wide range of different venues so what I'll do is I'll quickly show you the types of method feeders that I carry when I'm going to all my competitions up and down the country. Well, there are loads of different types of method feeders out there. When I talk about a method type feeder, these are really, this is the main selection that I carry with me. Um, there are two different sorts, really. This type is, you know, the, the more conventional type method feeder that I'm sure a lot of you have seen. These are obviously all the Matrix ones, but these, this, I mean, this was really part of the collection that I carry with me, you know, to cover all the different eventualities on different venues. A normal, when I say a normal type method feeder, that is the design that I usually think of. You know, it's the, it's the version with no sides on it. It's the one that you usually need to use a mould with. You know, it's always best to use a mould if you can. Um, this particular one is classed as a small and it's clearly marked there as 15 gram. So these methods are all marked up really, really clearly, which makes it obviously very, very quickly, you know, and easy to change and, and select the one that you need. Um, these range in sizes as you can see obviously sometimes they want more food than others and on some occasions you're casting further as well which is why we've got some really bigger ones here I mean that one is marked up at that's 30 gram that one clearly marked on the bottom which is great um, and the design of these the reason why I like these for you know for most of my fishing if not all the fishing like I said there's only that other type there that I actually use is it's got the lead here at the front or the weight as you can see is weighted at the front which means it casts really well because it obviously travels that way when you uh, when you cast it out it's got a nice little platform there for the bait to go on and these ribs here just help you know when you're molding pellets or ground bait it just helps and you know it gives gives that bait something to to, to grab to um, so that's one style that I use um, and the other style is this style here which it's basically got sides on it. Let me get one that's got a stem on it. There we go. Right, this particular one is clearly marked up at 40 grams, uh, and it's a medium, actually, in its actual size. Um, I mean, I use these more often than not. I'll be totally honest with you. And part of the reason for that is because a lot of the venues I fish, you're not you're not catching loads and loads and loads of fish, so you tend to be waiting quite a while for bites. The reason why I prefer this style when you're waiting a long time for bites, or can be waiting a long time for bites, is because it's basically got sides on it. And that just helps all the bait that's in there just stay contained. So if you're waiting up to 15, 20 minutes, sometimes even longer, then it just means that your bait is, is, is contained within that. And hopefully, if you've done it right, your hook bait is presented right in the middle of that. Um, that's basically the selection that I carry with me. I have got some pellet feeders here, which I do love to use those. But, you know, I don't find them quite as effective on as many venues as what this style is. But on the day, the pellet feeder is fantastic. Um, and the other bits, because I know a lot of you will ask about it, I carry these with two types of stem. 
Uh, these are interchangeable stems so you can have it as a free running feeder okay so to comply with free running fishery rules if that is the case all right but what you can actually do is slide that stem out if you wish so obviously you're left with the main body of the feeder and then what we can do is we can simply switch that I think I've got one here I carry a selection in my side drawer I can switch that for a stem that's got elastic in it and wherever possible I like to use an elasticated feeder just because I think the hookup is better because it's a self hooking rig that you know it's a self hooking method but that is um, all these stems there are two different sizes the length there's that length and then there's one shorter for shorter casting um, and they're all coupled with this black elastic and it that is a black all round elastic you know right so I use that for carp as well but it's also good for bream as well if you're catching you know you're fishing for bream it's not too strong it's a nice medium um, strength really um, and all you do with that is just simply thread that up through the body and they quickly and easily you've quickly changed that to an elasticated version but that is the collection that I carry with me to all the venues that I fish and I find that there's something there to cover everything Well, for all my method feeder fishing up to about 40 meters, I use the XS Slim. It's a fantastic all-round rod. You know, I, I use it for fishing for bream, but it's also very good for catching carp as well. 3.3 meter is the main um, length version that I use, which is 10 foot 10, and that'll allow me to fish a method feeder up to 40 meters. You can go past that depending on the type of feeder that you're using and the tip that you've got in that rod. Most of the time, I'm using a one and a half ounce tip, which is what I'm going to be using today and that is coupled with the new Horizon 3000 reel. The 4000 is ideal as well for that, that sort of rod but the 3000 is really nice and compact and it's a beautiful balance on that, that, you know, that sort of rod. That's um, on that reel I've got six pound carp master mainline. No need for any shock leaders whatsoever so I'll just fish that straight through to a snap link swivel and that is then tied onto the um, elasticated method feeder which is what I'm going to be using today. It's a really super simple setup and the great thing about that sort of setup is that it's also nice and compact if you want to underarm it. As we know in a lot of the venues that we fish these days, certainly the commercials, you can come close and catch fish late on down the margin or a 5 meter line or even the 10 or 12 meter line. Um, this setup allows you to use it on that line as well as well as further out into the lake so it's a great all-round setup that you can use on a you know on a variety of um, scenarios which means obviously it means you've got less kit setup to cover lots of different options As most of you will probably already know, when you're method feeder fishing, the key to it all is, as Tom Pickering says, don't move the feeder. That's what it's all about. You're presenting a little ball of bait, and that's what it's all about. You're setting a trap. And obviously, in order to help maintain that, you need two good um, rests to rest the rod on. Obviously, you need a good butt rest, and that is hopefully one that's going to you know, hold the butt of the rod in place, not just allow you to rest the rod on it but it's ideal if you can get one that's going to um, hold the butt of the rod because obviously some bites can be quite violent so obviously you don't risk um, the chance of losing your rod and obviously your front rod rest as well if you've got one like this that will just allow you know allow you to position the rod firstly anywhere along it because of the grooves in it so, um, but it also will stop the rod actually going in because like I say you don't get bites with a method feeder they are fish that hook themselves and that's when you need something at the end of that rod rest that's going to stop your rod going in. So I've just stepped up the feeder size now. This one's actually 30 gram, which is, you know, it's a little bit too heavy for the range that I'm fishing. It's only about 32 meters where I'm casting now. Um, I've gone close to that other bank, but it's meaning I can get a lot more bait in and it's going in with a, a louder crash, which sometimes that can be, you know, the signal um, 
to carp in these sorts of venues it just kind of wakes them up and lets them know it almost rings a, a dinner bell so all I'm doing is just filling that with with pellets I like to put one layer in first like that don't fill that too much because that's the layer that's going to expand and push your hook bait out lay the hook in and then add another layer over the top and like I say I'm putting more in now just to see if it can trigger some fish and trigger you know a response as you can see I'm piling quite a lot there that'll quickly expand out obviously there'll be a nice little spread there some of the pellets will remain in encased within the feeder itself because of the sides on the feeder obviously the water will get through those holes there push the help the pellets expand that will push pellets out so there'll be a nice spread of pellet there there'll be one base layer there that will remain in the feeder and then ideally the hook bait will remain right in the center like that with the weight of the hook just holding the wafter in there and obviously this is the elasticated feeder as well so all that coupled with the um, tip set right the fish should hook itself sucks the bait in hooks itself against the feeder and hopefully that means you've got a hook up this feeder is going in this feeder is going in a little bit heavier than the other feeder as you can imagine but I think that might be what's triggering triggering you know some bites now it's about half a metre from that other bank it's not too snaggy over there so I don't have to worry too much about it going in you know not, it's not like a, you've got a 50 centimetre hook length that's going to go past your feeder like you do when you're fishing a cage feeder obviously that's just going to crash in um, and hopefully we're going to catch a few more fish key when it's like this now we've got a bit of a breeze come now which we haven't had just keeping the tip down now I'm watching the line the line is sinking get that down underneath the water out of the way and then everything's set you can simply put the rod down like that I don't like to have it set too tight I like to have just a little bit of tension in it because like I said that last fish was a um, a drop back bite and obviously unless you've got a little bit of a bend in the tip you're not going to see a drop back bite um, if liners were a problem and there were fish cruising about on the top like it can happen on this sort of venue then I'd slacken that tip right off and try and encourage the line to, to sink lower down in the water so it was out of the way of uh, you know cruising fish um, but for today in that shallow water cruising fish aren't a problem today so I can fish it like this Go. I think that one's on. There we go. Felt a little bit like a bream that. But no, I'm pretty sure it's a carp. I'm not rushing it today. There's no snags over there to worry about. I'm trying to land every fish just so we can see what they are. I think we're going to catch mainly carp, but you never know, there could be some uh, interesting surprises, especially when you don't know anything about the venue, or, or very little about the uh, the venue. Just keep the rod down nice and low. Once you've got the fish coming towards you, that's it then. It can just be a case of winding in, or pumping, depends what, what your preference is. And once you get it within netting range, that's when you can lift the rod up obviously if you're fishing a shorter rod it's easier to do this because then when you do lift the rod straight up in front of you it, it, you know the fish is much closer to you so obviously when you're doing this likewise on a 13 foot rod or a 4 meter rod it's obviously different then because the fish come, when it does come up or you lift the rod up it's further out so it can be a little bit more awkward to net them Got that air in its mouth. Can feed the net out to it. Brilliant. Similar size to the last one. Still very, very <laughs> energetic, as you can see. He's actually shook the hook out. And shook the hook out. Not quite as big as the the first fish. I'm not even try and pick him up because he's got that much energy left in him. That can sometimes happen if you've netted him quickly. I'm not even going to try and pick him up because I don't want to damage him but lovely, it shows you that the rig's working now and those fish should definitely come to that extra feed 
But it's lovely playing fish on venues like this, you know. There aren't any snags out there as such, so you can play play the fish down nice and low. Some people, you know, certain people just enjoy cranking carp and just winding them in, and sometimes I'll do that if if need be. There's no need to on this session, but I haven't seen this fish yet, but I think it's a decent fish. I've heard there are some wild carp in this venue as well, so, you know, we really could hook anything, but this one's just on an 8mm wafter. Lovely drop back bite. I'm casting up to that other bank and it just everything just dropped back. I just give it a couple of seconds. I just saw the tip twitch again, um, signalling that the fish had hooked itself. And it had obviously swam towards me. Such an exciting way of fishing, you know, when it's self hooking like that, it's just a case of setting it all up, you know. Getting the tip right, your feeder right, your bait and everything the way it's presented, and then you literally just wait for the fish to hook itself. You're almost kind of setting a trap. There you go, got that air in its mouth. Scoop him. Lovely. Hooked in the top lip. And you can see, just there. Great big lips on that one. Just a yellow 8mm wafter. There's a lovely fish, some big scales on him. Still got plenty of energy. Oh, a big mouth on him, that one. Beautiful. Great big mouth. You can see how they can quickly suck in those 8mm pellets. You know, I mean, if you compare that to the size of feeder I was using originally, <laughs> you could even suck in the whole feeder. Lovely fish, let's pop him back, see if we can catch some more. Well as you can imagine with a self hooking rig like this, the hook length is very very important. Um, four inch is usually the length uh, and do check that because again with fisheries, some fishery rules stipulate you can uh, you know there is a minimum length of hook length you can actually use so be careful um, four inch tends to comply with most fishery rules that allow the method and the great thing now is we can get ready-made um, hook lengths that are such a good quality um, obviously many many years ago when these first came out you know when ready tied hook lengths were available the quality wasn't very good but thankfully I mean there are lots out there but these are the ones that I use I use them straight out of the packet I'm using a banded pellet today so that's what these are perfect for um, they're all four on four inch in length and all I do that once I get them out of the packet like that I mean I've just brought that to show you I transfer them straight into a into a proper hook box um, obviously and you can get loads in there so so all we do is get the pellet bander that goes into the band itself like that open the band out and that makes it very very easy to get in this case a six mil pellet in the middle just release it like that so then the band is around the pellet it's on perfect hair like that and because that's a hard bait you can pack it into the feeder really nice and tight um, you know without fear of squashing it like you can with corn the other sort of hook length you might want to use is one that's got a, a bait stop on it. Now this is for using baits like corn or meat or even popped up bread as you can see. It's quite a longer hair and it's actually got a, a bait stop on there which stops the bait coming off. Um, I'll show you how we mount the bait on this type of hair. Down the center of that spike is a hollow. All right, So what you need is a a baiting needle like this one okay just nice and sharp and what we're basically going to do is I trap the feeder between my knees like that and right in the middle down the center of that bait spike is a groove and as you can see the baiting needle goes straight into it mounts into it okay and that means you can mount it on there so all we've really got here I've got some soft pellets I'll try and show you the principle with these basically use the spike to go through the center of the hook bait, take the needle out, that obviously swivels like that and that stops 
the bait coming off. Obviously with soft baits like this, um, they're you know, not really suited for method feeder fishing, obviously with soft pellets, but as you can imagine, I mean that shows the principle of it basically, that can be a piece of corn. With a hair that long you might want to put two pieces of corn on there or even three, or it could be some discs of bread or obviously luncheon meat. So that's another way um, that you can mount different sorts of baits that aren't um, suitable for bait bands. And the final type of hook length that I'd just like to show you is one that's just simply got a hair on it with, the, with a loop, as you can see. It's quite a, a decent length hair, and it's just got a loop tied in it. Again, these are ready-made, these are the Matrix ones, and these are what we use when um, we're using boilies or wafters. But as you can imagine, you need some sort of a stopper um, to stop the bait actually coming off that. All right, so we can use these. These are the Fox ones, I believe, uh, and I'll show you exactly how we use these. Basically what you need, you need a baiting needle again, so I trap the feeder between my knees, get your baiting needle, but you need one that's got a little, I don't know if you can see it on this camera, it's got a little um, spike on it, it's, you know, it's, it's one for loops basically, so you can see it's got a hook, because that's what you need, you're going to be trying to hook that loop through back through the bait, alright, so it is a needle as well, but it's one that's got a hook on it. Okay, this is the, one of the Fox ones. And what we're going to do is just going to mount a, a nice white one, shall we? A nice white wafter. All you do is thread the baiting needle down the middle of the wafter. Okay, what we're then going to do is use that hook to hook the loop. Okay, like that. And then all you do is slide the wafter onto the hair. Okay, and then release the hook. What you need to do then is get one of the little bait stoppers. This one's already been cut off. Okay. Pop that through the loop and then pull the line tight through the hair. So it sits nice and tight against the wafter. And as you can see that's mounted really, really nicely now. Okay. And because that's semi-buoyant, obviously because that plastic stopper is really really light it's not going to affect the semi buoyancy of that hook bait too much so it still stays nice and light and obviously you can do that um, with normal boilers as well it doesn't have to be a wafter so hopefully those three ways of um, using the different hook lengths that are available hopefully that's going to help you just kind of make a, a decision as to what you're going to use depending on the hook bait that you plan on using One of the key aspects about method feeder fishing is getting your bait right. Now there are different ways of um, fishing with a method as regards the bait that you introduce. Sometimes ground, just ground bait around the method itself can be can be a winner. And on other occasions, pellet might be the you know the best way of fishing with it. Certainly if you're targeting carp and in the summer months when they want more feed. The session that I'm on today, they've really favoured more pellets. So I've really been moulding just pellets around the feeder. Obviously the consistency of the pellet is very important if this is what you're going to be doing and as a general rule, um, two mil pellets, give them two minutes and then drain the water off. It really is that simple, you know, I think Tom Pickering said it in one of his videos years ago, two minutes for two mils and four minutes for four mils. Very basic guidelines to go by, but by doing that, even if you haven't quite given them long enough, you can always obviously add water to them afterwards. One little procedure that I like to do is I like to do one mix of my pellets before the start of the session. That's um, obviously, hopefully going to be enough for the session. But obviously what will happen is, like on days like today, they will dry out as the session goes on. So all I do is I have a little tub, a smaller tub next to that. And all I do is in small batches like that, I just add a handful out of there, into there, and add a little bit more water. So you're just freshening them up as you go and the great thing with that is well it's two reasons why i think that's a great way of doing it one is it's amazing how much more of the flavors of the pellet actually get released from a wet pellet i mean let's face it when you first wet and dampen your, your pellets down you've got to admit that that's when they smell at the strongest when the pellets have dried out a little bit you often find that there's not much smell there at all so i think that's a, a key feature that i you know like to um, put into my 
um, session and the other reason why I think it's a great way of doing it is it's, it's be keeping the pellets fresher and because they're still wet and or damp as you go that means they're obviously going to bind to the feeder much much better there are other occasions as well where a combination of both ground bait and pellet can work and that could be a great way of targeting skimmers and bream on some of these mixed commercial fisheries like Boston Lakes for example where you could be catching skimmers and bream but obviously carp can quite easily rock up as well so you've got a nice combination there and with the combination of pellet and ground bait you're obviously reducing the amount of feed that you're actually putting around the feeder itself so that can be a good winter technique one of the things that I like to do is just kind of make sure that my rig's working correctly. Obviously when you're waiting a long time for bites like you can be in winter you've got more time to do things like this whereas in summer it can be a little bit more hectic but what I like to do is literally load the feeder up and put it in a tub of water next to me just to get an idea for what's actually happening um, to your rig whilst it's actually out in the water. It's amazing how many times it might highlight something certainly with wafters because they might be performing differently depending on the type of hook length that you're using and the weight of the hook as well can have a big impact when you're using semi-buoyant baits like a wafter. With pellets obviously they're heavier baits or corn they're more inclined to stay exactly where they are where you intend them to be when you mould them into the feeder. So I, I always like to have a, a tub of water next to me on my side tray so I can just quickly before I cast each one out, just quickly test the hook bait, make sure it's working correctly or how you want it to work. And you can also see how the feed is emptying with the consistency of the pellets or the ground bait that you're introducing. You can see how long it's actually taking for it to break down. And it just makes you um, uh, a lot more confident in the way that your rig's working. And it obviously, you know, as regards the timing of your cast, it just reassures you of how long your rig is actually out there before your bait actually starts breaking down. Well I really hope you've enjoyed this insight into the you know the thinking behind a lot of my method feed of fishing. I love using the method and I'm going to be using it a lot more this year but I'm going to be using it on some of the venues where I haven't used it before because I think the potential of it is is something that I've missed out on over you know the last few years so it is something I'm going to be doing more of certainly in match situations and in sessions like this. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a few fish being caught it's been a fantastic day weather wise and don't forget if you want to see more videos like this there are hundreds more videos coming just hit that subscribe button there and if one video each week isn't quite enough for you and you want to see some extra videos each month ones that are a bit more in depth then you might want to have a look at my coaching channel and my behind the scenes video channel that's at the link just there so thanks for watching i really appreciate it i hope you've enjoyed seeing a few fish being caught i've really enjoyed being here today and uh, just hopefully answering a few of the questions that you guys have been sending in over the last few days so thanks for watching i'll see you all in the next video